Welcome to Tough Talk. My guest today is Madhav Chavan, an educationist and the founder of one of the leading NGOs on education. And what better person to talk to regarding the Right to Education bill than him? Welcome to the show, Madhav. Thank you. You know, I would like to cover a broad spectrum of Indian education issues, right from the Right to Education bill um, to, if we get the chance, to higher education. But let me start with the bill which is the talk of the moment. Um, any preliminary thoughts on, if you will, the good points of the bill, and in particular, how different it is from what they inherited, or what the Congress Party inherited from uh, the NDA several years back? Um, the good part is that it is there. <laughs> <laughs> the bad part is that it's not sufficient and not very clear. But the strongest point perhaps in this is that there is a financial commitment from the government. Uh, state governments will not be happy with it because they'll say that you are saying that we'll get together and figure out who's going to pay what. But in the end, the law basically says that the union government will work with the state governments and the finance commission to figure out what's the cost and who's going to pay how much and where's the money going to come from. Mm. This was a very tricky issue as to whether there is enough money to provide free and compulsory education for all children and in some way, a very Indian sort of way that uh, the, the law, it's no more a bill, it's mm -hmm. now passed in the parliament, I think, mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. So uh, that is more or less sorted out. But let me, let me try and get this. We've had a cess on education for the last several years. The government has been spending something like three and a half to four and a half percent of GDP on education for the last 60 years. How was it, what was this bill do that was not there before? No, the three and a half on now in this year and last year, about 4.18 percent. Out of that, about three percent is on elementary education. The rest has grown, mm -hmm. especially on the secondary and higher education mm -hmm. side. The percentage spending on elementary education has not really gone up, including even the CES. Okay. and the midday meals for, for that matter. Mm -hmm. What has increased is the union government's contribution in the elementary education sector. And because the state has then correspondingly spent less so that the aggregate stays the same? I can't be very sure about it, but there are accusations that the states are not spending enough. I know that many states have not actually taken the levels of spending higher. And this is something that the planning commission was pointing out to the states. This is the bone of contention. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, Let's say we've got the bill, we've got the official sanction, um, it's now enshrined in law that the government will spend and so on and so forth. Okay, how else is it different? One of the things that the bill, when I went through the bill, uh, and as a layperson, let me say that I was shocked at some of the provisions uh, in the bill. Uh, the biggest provision, if you will, or the biggest element there is that of Big Brother, more Babugiri. And here is a state now enforcing various aspects of education. Starting with, let me give you an illustration and then you can expand on it, that teachers will not be allowed to have any tutoring classes. Now please tell me, how does this work? Well, on the tutoring side, as you know, there are various sides to it. Because there are regularly, even government school teachers mm -hmm. or private school teachers routinely tell in the class that you come to my class afterwards, pay me No, absolutely. Money. That's just like That saying, needs to be stopped. Whether you'll be able you to police it, it or not is a second question. Yeah.